wasn't true, it was a delusion. And we later found out from the hospital that's because I'm, uh... Undiagnosed bipolar. Before I begin, I want to give a big old sloppy kiss to my patrons for voting this film, because I loved it. It's so great to watch something that's both healthy and delicious. Oh my god. Silver Linings Playbook is a ludicrously tight film with an incredibly clever thriving ecosystems of patterns, symbols and moving arcs. I, I gotta say I'm impressed. Thank you. Every line contributes to its themes, it knows when to be witty, when to undercut itself, and when to let wit solve its drama. Furthermore, every character arc are so incredibly well coordinated that their individual rise and falls gives purpose for the direction of other characters. You told me you should never throw a marriage out the window. At its core, Silver Linings Playbook is a love story about two people resolving the shame they feel with their mental health issues. More specifically, Bipolar Disorder Bipolar Disorder, or previously known as Manic Depressive Illness, is a chronic mood disorder that causes episodes of mania, hypermania, and alternating or interwining episodes of depression. As Grand, Burke, Bermeyer, and Vieta argued, it's a mental disorder that causes impairments in functionality of daily life, resulting in costs for both patients and society. It is a multifaceted disease, and a comprehensive biological, social, and psychological approach is mandatory. I have a problem. Mm -hmm. You say more inappropriate things than appropriate things. Our protagonist, Pat, is someone recovering from an episode where he lost his bananas and beat his wife, Nikki's cheating partner to near death, and now lives with his parents. He tries to slip back into his old life, but fails. Yeah, yeah, I did it. Thank you. Ah, get away oh, from me! Wait, wait, get wait, away! Wait, wait. As a result, Pat's desires are directly a result of his denial. About a week before the incident, I called the cops, and I told them that my wife and the history guy were plotting against me by embezzling money from the local high school, which wasn't true, it was a delusion. His early life wasn't exactly a triumph, but to move on, he needs to accept it. By giving his wife an opportunity to breathe in a new condition, he unknowingly admits that his neurosis has made her feel suffocated. But then he meets Tiffany, a young widow with similar medical experiences. But where Tiffany finds comfort through casual dalliances, Pat finds it with Nikki. She's gonna be competing at the Ben Franklin Hotel. Oh really? My wife loves dance. Nikki loves dance. However, they're both substituting self-love with the impression of love from other people. Wait, what? <laughs> What's happening? Therefore, as they develop respect for one another, they heal each other. Pat even defends her multiple times, therefore allowing him to defend himself. I go, I go to a lot of therapy, Ronnie. What are you trying to say? I'm just saying. Am I messed up? So, um, when well, you stop judging people, you judge everybody. You're the one who has a messed up marriage. Just... Each character believes in a series of ideas which are all established in his or her mind. By the way, I'm about to fucking quote a theorist quoting another theorist because my fucking monkey brain couldn't refer to the ideas without crediting both as explicitly. As argued by Tegiza D and Maradi, in Guest Out Psychology, such ideas are called dogma. Nikki's waiting for me to get in shape and get my life in order and then she's gonna be with me. People use such dogmas to express the reality of their world, while it is one of their psychological capabilities, but their mind is armed with another capability too, which is hypothesis. Maybe you think that Nikki is not around and Tiffany is an attractive girl, and if you get drawn towards Tiffany, you will spoil your chances of getting Nikki back to you. Not bad, Dr. Jones. Making, or structure making, about which they are nonetheless often skeptical. Relying on such assertions, comparing dogma with hypothesis, one realizes that keeping such dualities in their minds could be frustrating or even devastating. I want her to stop dressing like she dresses, and I want her to stop acting so superior to me, okay? And she wanted me to lose weight and stop my mood swings, which both I've done. However, psychologically, they are inclined to contrive a coherent combination of these notions to reach equilibrium between them. So if you become friends with Tiffany, Nikki will think that you're a kind, generous, large-hearted person who, who helps people in need, who is basically thriving. So if you help Tiffany, it would be good for you. Relying on the aforementioned criteria for developing psychological balance, the present research has come to recognize Patrick as a mental patient trapped in disequilibrium. As yet, as a patient whose friendship with Tiffany helps him to reach a 
Gestaltian and Chip Depth. God, Nabin, I was going so well. Gestaltian notion of equilibrium through self realization, maturity, and closure. Oh my, that was such a pain in the ass to read. Pat, through his relationship with Tiffany, creates a healthy environment. From not feeling ashamed of his bipolar disorder, he begins to not look down on Tiffany, but at her, as if she's his own reflection. No, I don't have, have a filter one, when I talk. I know you I don't, don't have, have a filter. filter. Can we have one talk, fucking right? conversation without yes, you reminding me that my goddamn I'm husband sorry. is dead? Okay, I'm oh sorry. Oh my god. A particular detail they share is the loss of their former partners. Except where Tiffany's husband died, Pat's ex-wife moved on and seemingly never loved him. The equilibrium Tiffany guides him towards is that his life is irreversible. He can only move on. Other her means requires coercion, as she gets him to join a dance competition in exchange for delivering his letter. However, as they practice dancing day by day, they fall in love. A feeling that becomes their true objectives with every meeting, but they kind of refuse to recognize it. Tip, I'm sorry, I can't do anything else that could read Nikki's letter, okay? It's just keep, it's in my back of my head. We don't almost have it. Regardless, Pat actually ends up becoming more composed than his own parents, who were previously compensating over his erratic behavior. But after a bet goes wrong, because Tiffany and Pat need to be together for his father's team to win, a new bet is formed, a parlay, which hinges on them getting a five in the dance competition. The bet is an extremely clever way to force Pat to fully commit to his reinvestment that he's unconsciously made on his own life to force him to care again, so he's no longer substituting his reality with the fantasy of a past that never truly existed. Just look, I'm my best self today, and I think she's her best self today, and our love's gonna be fucking amazing. Originally, Pat refuses, but he comes back when they lie and say his ex-wife will be there. But then she does actually show up, which breaks Tiffany's heart, despite the stress. They dance, it's dope, they get a five, which they celebrate, much to the confusion of everyone. Why are they so excited about a five? However, as Pat goes to meet Nikki, Tiffany leaves, but Pat's dad pushes him to go after her. That girl loves you, she really, really loves you. And I don't know if Nikki ever did, but she sure as hell doesn't love you right now. And they embrace. Life goes on. The story is a classic, the journey is more important than the destination, and every step changes where the path leads. A love story about how a healthy environment creates a better life. In their study, Social Support for Individuals with Serious Mental Illness, the authors noted that in the general population, social support buffers against stressful life events, increases adherence to medical treatments, and improves recovery from medical illness, among other health-promoting effects. For people with serious mental illness, Perceptions of adequate social support are associated with several psychological benefits, including increased self-esteem, feelings of empowerment, functioning quality of life, and recovery while the absence of social support appears related to greater psychiatric symptoms, poorer perceptions of overall health, and reduced potential for full community integration." End quote. This is an important study because all of the factors relate to Pat and his family. If they all had supported each other early on and confronted their illness, then possibly the bipolar outburst would have been so strong. However, it is through social support that everything works out. Now, I had planned to end this video with some sort of wise final word, but I'm not a psychologist, and everything I said came from those very specific readings, so all I've got to say is Look after each other. To destigmatize is to find peace and acceptance with what is and love the thrill of what can be. People like Tiffany or Danny or me, maybe we know something that you guys don't know, okay? Did you ever think about maybe that? Maybe the silver lining we find are the friends that we make along the way. That was my attempt at being poetic and wise. I don't think it worked. Keep on going, no matter what I say. So this essay took absolutely ages to write. Hopefully you liked it. I really, really just, I feel happy to be back making non-superhero film essays. Now, if you don't mind, I'm gonna go save the world.